I want to read a scripture to you found in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. You know, the Bible teaches us that they'll praise him with their lips, but their heart is far from him. You know, and I hear so many says, well, I know who Jesus Christ is. I know who he is. But, you know, Satan knows who he is, too. He calls for a relationship with God. That's what he wants us to have is a relationship with him. Amen. I want to share something with you just real quick. Uh, my daughter and I was down at uh, Burlington Coat Factory Wednesday, and uh, we was looking through some blouses, and my little grandson, my five-year-old grandson, she had him in the cart, and we was looking through some blouses, and this uh, middle-aged woman was on the other side looking through some blouses as well. And uh, all of a sudden, my grandson hollered, Mommy, and uh, she said, What, Canaan? He said, Mommy, my face is hurt and says, come and pray for it right now. She goes over and immediately my daughter takes both of her hands and wraps around his little face and she begins to pray. And after she got done praying, that middle-aged woman looked at her and she said, how wonderful that is. He was talking to Sister Betty last night about, you know, what's going on in our household. And uh, she kept, just kept saying uh, how wonderful that was. She said, you ought to be on a bulletin board somewhere, and they ought to be showing it all over the place. She said, because if we had more stuff like that going on, then this world would be a better place to live in. I said, yes. I said, because it definitely changes things. Prayer does change things. Amen. Amen, amen. I'm excited tonight. I'm expecting God to do wonderful and mighty things tonight. Amen. Ladies, I'd like for every one of you to stand with me and let us all go to prayer and ask God to bless the service tonight. Precious Heavenly Father, once again, we just give you the praise and the glory and the honor, Heavenly Father, to be here, Lord. And God, I just pray that you will wrap your loving arms around each and every lady that is here tonight, God, that we welcome you into this place. I just pray that you will bless them, Father. You know what they stand in need of, God, even before they ask. And Father, I just pray that you will continue to anoint Sister Betty, God, as she brings us the word. Father, that it will pierce our hearts, God, Lord, that we will be able to walk and to live in that word, Father, that we will show this world, Father, who we are and who dwells within us, Lord. I just pray, Father, that you will have your way tonight. God, we already feel your presence in this place. And, Father, we're expecting great and mighty things. God, bless these ladies tonight, God, and meet every need in their lives, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. And, ladies, we all said amen. Why I'm here tonight, I don't know. I think it's because I can sing so high, I don't know. He's got a special voice. Did you come tonight to worship the Lord? Amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after him with me, joys I'm to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Head for that jubilee, yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning.
like Jehovah. There's no God 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 like Jehovah.
worship Him tonight, church.
our hands and lift our voices and just tell him he's a holy God tonight. Just worship him. God, it's good to be here tonight. Amen. I was lucky to get a chance to be here. I didn't think I was going to be able to tonight because um, having children and having a husband out of town, it's kind of hard to find a babysitter. So praise the Lord. My father stepped in and took the role tonight. So Lord bless him tonight with my children. So. <laughs> but we're here to take up our tithing offerings tonight. <laughs> Joyce and Nancy, please come forward. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for the opportunity, Lord, to be in your house, to serve you and to worship you and to lift up your name, God. God, you are the reason why we are here, Heavenly Father, and I pray, God, you will touch every lady here, Lord, that maybe they will be blessed, God, and they will walk out here differently, Lord God, and filled and lifted up from you, Lord. Touch this offering, Lord God, that it may continue to spread the glory of your will, Lord. We give you praise and our glory. Amen. 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 Jazz, come on up. While she's getting prepared to do a sign for us, uh, I do want to thank all of our visitors, and I especially thank all of our locals. 
you know, the ones that come here regular, <laughs> they're the locals. <laughs> because you keep the church lights on, and I appreciate that. But I really appreciate our visitors coming. And I do want to recognize one of our ministers here tonight uh, that pastors the Sounds of Victory Church of God. Sister Drew, uh, Ju it's Joyce, I know what it is. It's just, I, I had all these J names in my head. Sister Joyce Charles, would you stand and greet the, the ladies? It's a wonderful delight to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And her assistant. <laughs> you know, you, really, you, know, you don't see one Harley without the other. Uh, Sister Brenda nicely, and I said, you play the bass, don't you? I got all excited. <laughs> so I, I put her to work playing the bass. Um, and she's going to be playing the piano for us in the morning. And I appreciate that because Paul has other obligations, and I appreciate that. Um, but I also want to recognize all of our ministers here tonight. If, if you're a, a minister, if you have a ministry, uh, I want you to stand. Yes, look around, yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And I just uh, appreciate everybody being here. And at this time, come on up.
Sister Wolin, come on up and sing for us. What a privilege to be in God's house. Amen. Lifting up the name of our Savior, our Lord, our King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his name. So good to be with you. The widow had spent all she had on doctor. Years passed and her sickness pulled her down. By faith she pressed her way and touched the master. Master, when she heard a great. 
King. Thank you, Lord. My days are filled with laughter. My heart has known your peace. I've traveled far, still there is far to go.
far still there is far to go but in my heart there is a longing to look upon your face where you are is where or not but you you got to hear you, you can follow it there's just just a song that says i'm still holding on lord i'll never let you go you gave me a smile you touch my heart you touch my soul and the bridges that's behind me Lord, I burn them to the ground. I'm still holding on, my Lord, to the best thing I've ever found. Well, I'm still holding on. Lord, I'll never let you go.
love it when they just pick up where you just leave off or whatever. My, my, my. Anybody can play for me and play for anybody. It is so good to be here tonight. I tell you, if I lived in this area, I know where I'd go to church. I'm serious as a heart attack. <laughs> I am serious. I, I, I love what God does in places, but I just tell you, I love it when people just come in and they get away from everything and they're just ready to worship the Lord and just let Him have His way in their hearts and in their lives. I was talking to your pastor's wife today. She said, Sister Betty, I don't know who all is going to be there, and I've invited people. I said, I don't care if there's ten. We're going to have church. Does it matter? You see, I was telling some ladies before service, I saw Jesus coming down the road in the Word of God, kicking up the dust as he went, and he said to the disciples, you go buy meat. I have something real important that I need to do. And he went by and talked to a woman and forgave her of her sins that no one else would have anything to do with. And they said, she is a lost cause. And Jesus said, I'll give you water wherein you will never, never, never thirst again. So if somebody laid their hand on you like they did me when I was growing up, said, poor little thing. They did. Right in the area that I'm living in, I, when I left there at 14 years old, when my dad passed away, I said, I'll never come back to Kentucky again. My life was miserable in school in Kentucky. I was made fun of. I was ridiculed because we were holy rollers. Remember that? Remember when you were just a holy roller, a tongue-talking holy roller, and they made fun of you everywhere. And I said, when I get away from here, I'll never be back. I'm pastoring some of the people that made fun of me. <laughs> Boy, God's got a sense of humor. God has a sense of humor. I am just so glad that he knows exactly what he's doing. They patted me on the shoulder and said, poor little thing. Not only is she a holy roller kid, but her mama is a preacher, which is unheard of and is just unconscionable. It's just not, I'm so glad to see other women ministers here tonight. My Lord, it makes you feel good. And I was asking her today, I said, how long has it been since a young lady has raised up and said, not just a young man, I like young men too to raise up, but I'm telling you, God is calling all flesh, and I want to see some young ladies raise up and say, I feel the call of God, and I'm going to carry this gospel. Praise God forevermore. Well, what they don't know is I'm the happiest person that they felt sorry for. In all the world. Have you ever had. Two, well how many any preachers here tonight. Have you ever had two messages. Y'all are in trouble. Got two messages. And don't know which one. I want to preach. They kind of run together. So I've just kind of thrown. I've prayed all afternoon. I have, I've said God help me. But I think God will bring just exactly. What he wants. Sister Willem, it is so good to see you. I give honor to you, and I give honor to Brother Willem that's gone on to be home with the Lord. That man uh, left an impression and a footprint in my life because somehow or another, I don't know how they did it, they got me on some kind of evangelism-type board in the state, and I never, never thought in the million years they'd ever do that. And when I got there, I was the only woman. And he was just about the only one that would talk to me for a while. And I'll never forget, when I walked in, I thought, where do I sit down? Maybe you've never been in uncomfortable positions like that, but us lady ministers get in uncomfortable positions because uh, there's people that think we shouldn't be doing what we're doing. And so I walked into that boardroom, and I'll never forget it, all those people sitting there. And uh, I said, oh, what do I? And Brother Woolham said, Hey, Sister Shaver, just come right over here and sit down right here. How you doing? 
I said, Phew, I'm doing fine. And so, you know, you just want someone to talk to. You want someone to know that, that they care. And that started up a conversation and a godly relationship of ministerial uh, respect. And I, I'm telling you what, I know we wish he was here, but I tell you, he's looking over the portals of heaven tonight saying, don't look for me to come back. If you want to see me, you're going to have to come up here. <laughs> Woo! Don't you know heaven is sounding sweeter all the time. I want to talk to you tonight about the battle that is within. The enemy knows that he has but just a short time to work. See, some of us think we're here forever. The problem with the church world is we have gotten comfortable with where we live. We like it here. We like it. We like our homes. We, we like our jobs. We like our status quo of life. And we're really not all that concerned about leaving here. And that's the battle that's within because we're getting ready to change addresses, folks. Woo! But you see, bad things are going to have to happen before we are willing to change the address. See, when things get bad where you are, you want to move. You want to get out of it. And this old world is rocking and reeling and rolling. And hell is enlarging its mouth. And the armies are encompassed about Jerusalem. My God. And I'm looking up for our redemption is drawing nigh. And we're getting ready to get out of here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'll feed us from your word tonight. Send that anointing that makes preaching easy. Lord, we don't come to perform. We don't come to impress. I pray that you'll deal with every lady in this place. I pray, Lord, that we'll draw closer to you. I pray that we'll get ready to move up and move out in the name of Jesus. And we'll give you the honor and the praise for everything that's accomplished. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. Let me give honor to other ministers that are in this congregation tonight. I often speak in front of people that forgot more than I'll ever know. Her. And I am humble when other ministers are in the congregation. And I just pray that you receive a little bit. And if not, come to me after service and feed me so I can do better next time. We, it is a very intimidating thing sometimes to minister in front of others. But we're all in this together. Godly living, as I said last night, and morals, family values, the moving of God's spirit is at an all-time low. I got a phone call from my brother in another state that goes to a large church outside of Atlanta. Guess you know the state now, don't you? And I said to him, oh, a lady that's just started coming to our church got filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost the other night, standing at the altar. She was a nominal of belief, and I said, would you like to be filled with the Holy Ghost? She said, yes, I would. And I said, well, just reach up and receive it in the name of Jesus. Just like when you got saved, like you received Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. We laid hands on her, and I said, in the name of Jesus, just receive you the Holy Ghost. And it just began to flow out of her. He said, do you know how long it has been in our church, our Church of God church, that we've heard of anybody getting filled with the Holy Ghost? Do you know how long it has been since we've heard speaking in another language? Do you know how long it has been since we've heard message in tongues and interpretation? I've been going there X number of years, and in the last two or three years, we've had none of that. There is a battle that's going on within God's people, and we have a choice to make. And I don't know about you, but I do not want to compromise my sacrifice. I want the power of God. Heal me, Lord. I need healing. I need healing in my body. I need healing in my spirit. I need healing in my thought process. I need healing in my home. I need healing in every step that I take. Oh, God, don't let 
your Holy Spirit be taken from me. If that is your desire tonight, lift your hands and say, God, don't let your Holy Spirit be taken from me. There's a demonic activity in the air. Come on. Mama, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to be able to pray. You need to, you know, at 2 o'clock in the morning when the pastor's asleep and the doctor can't be reached, you need to have the power of the Holy Ghost. I'll get to my scripture in a minute, but I'm going to do this the way God wants me to do it. Uh, oh, you need to be able to pray. There's nothing like a praying woman. There's nothing like a praying mom. There's nothing like a praying grandmother. The devil is scared to death of you when you get up in the morning and say, I'm going to live for God. I'm laying my I'm laying my children at the altar. I hope I get through this tonight because I feel it boiling up in me. This demonic activity that's in the air and the atmosphere that's coming against our daily Christian lives. And I'm not trying to invent a boogeyman. Hmm. But I'm real worried about Christians that don't believe in demons anymore. I'm real worried about people that don't believe there's a real devil. Don't think he won't reveal himself to you. Don't think he won't steal your children right from underneath your nose. We, I would to God, that we as a Holy Ghost filled church would wake up and realize we are at war, spiritual war. And so when you raise up, you don't say, please, God, please, God, oh, I beg you, God. You say, Satan, come on. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God, I take authority over you with the power that was with me but now lives within me. You've got the power to raise up and rebuke the enemy and stop this raging battle that is within I want us to read a verse before I get too wound up in James 3. And 3, 13 rather through 16, it says, Who is a wise man and dude with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strife, talking about the battle that's within. Listen, ladies, I'm a lady. I'm a woman. I've worked in the factories of Chicago. I haven't been one born with a gold spoon in my mouth. <laughs> I'd rather work a bunch of, around a bunch of, of men than women. There's no filthier talkers than women that are not living for God. They're not any harder. A and hold on to your seats. There's not anybody more picky and more critical and more competitious than church women. Bitter envy and strife in your hearts. Glory not. Lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and it's devilish. That's what the scripture says. See, you couldn't get some of you to smoke and chew or even run with those that do. Couldn't get you to take a drink for nothing in this world. Couldn't get you to get on a dance floor for anything, and I'm proud of that. But oh, this central devilish battle, this religious battle that comes from within that thinks we have to be a certain image and have to look a certain way and be a certain thing. Or right, come on, competition one with another. I'm here to tell you there's a battle raging within, but the enemy is afraid of women that are full of love and power and peace and fall of the Holy Ghost. I remember
remember when I was a little girl going into the church and old sister Aunt Rosalie sat on the second row and she had a knot on the back of her head and she was full of the Holy Ghost. And when the power of God would hit her, she'd roll out in the floor and us kids would say, oh God, don't let it hit Aunt Rosalie tonight. We brought our friend from church and just as sure as we brought our friend from church, Aunt Rosalie would take a roll and when she got a hold of you and was about your age, she began to shake her begin to shake her hands and say God God has a plan for you God's got his hand upon you and you've got to oh I'll tell you something go from the top of your head to the sole of your feet and you just quit running from God and all of a sudden you realized that he took care of the battle that was within you oh, give us some good old Holy Ghost Aunt Rosalie's in our church that will come up to our, listen, how old are you, sweetheart? <laughs> She's going to say about 15. I know you don't like that. You will someday. <laughs> how old are you? <laughs> I'm here to tell you this is your day. I'm not going to ask you because you'll probably tell me 15. <laughs> this is the day of the young lady. This is the day when women can do anything. Come on. This is the day where we're been put on equal ground. And I'm not a woman's liver. Really, I'm not. Never have been. I'm first Christian. Secondly, I'm a wife. Thirdly, I'm a mother. Fourthly, I'm a grandmother. And in my spare time, I preach. And it comes just in that order. But there's a battle going on now within. The ambitions of our hearts are rising up. Education is real important right now, and it is. I am an education nut because I didn't get much, and I want everybody to get all they can get. It's all important, but it doesn't come from here or down here or around us. All good things come from above. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these other things shall be added unto you. In other words, you have to be able to discern between the natural and the spiritual. Our ways are not always God's ways. By understanding, it's not always God's understanding. Thus a battle starts in our minds, in our emotions, in our walk with God. And some of your 40 and 45 and the devil says, it's time. Now the stress comes in. You know that stress. Come on, ladies. There's nothing like female stress. Sorry, men. Y'all may want to step out. I don't know. There's nothing like female stress. You're about 45 and the doctor says it's time to lose your mind. The doctor says it's time for you to turn to a dragoness. The doctor says it's time for you to get all nervous and jittery and your husband doesn't even know one day to the next who he's waking up with and what you're going to be. Oh, that ought not to be. We are vassals of God. He takes care of the battle within. It's joy. Unspeakable. <laughs> Woo! And full of glory to us that walk with the Lord. God wants to set us free once and for all. You don't have to schedule a nervous breakdown. When the enemy rears his ugly head, you begin to recognize that familiar spirit that shows up when you get all nervous and intimidated there are people in this place tonight you've got talents you've got abilities but you said I can't sing like sister so and so so I'm not I know how women think I know how they think so I'm not going to sing 
I can't play like so-and-so, so I'm not going to play. I can't teach like so-and-so, so I'm not going to teach. I can't do it like somebody else, and I can't look like them. So I'm not going to do it. And we judge things by how we, how we think and by how they look. And the battle starts within. Some of us need to realize that we are fighting a spirit, a lack of self-worth. Some of us are fighting in the spirit of our past. Now hang with me. Some of us have been molested, abused, misused, talked about. Some of us have had people that we really loved and trusted do us wrong. How do you know that, Sister Betty? You won't get five women together and that not be the case. We live in a world of lust and filth where women are nothing but sexual objects. This is a ladies' meeting. And we tend to be living in this twiggy little world where everything has to look like Hollywood. And we lose our sense of self-worth and what God would have us to do. And the battle from within rages all the time because there's that strife and that envying. And it says where envying and strife is, there is confusion. And listen to this. This is really awesome. Every, all, every evil work. So when you're full of strife and confusion and upset and someone doesn't know from one day to the next, if you, come on, if you're going to be up or down, if you're going to be saved or lost, if you're going to be for what's going on or against it and they're waiting to see what side of the fence you're on before they say anything to you. When that kind of strife and evil is at work, every evil of the enemy is at work. You open the door for every evil spirit that there is to work in your life. <laughs> it's time to take some ground. It's time to place the flag of the blood of Jesus right at our own doorstep, right where we live, right where we stand on and say, you've gone as far as you're going, devil. Let it be held high. What can wash away my sin? I'm, I'm, I'm going all over this tonight because I'm not even hitting two-thirds of this because I'm talking from my heart tonight. Nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus can fight this raging battle that's within you. Some of you need to learn how to pray in the Holy Ghost. The enemy cannot understand what you're saying when you're praying in the Holy Ghost. It's a, whoo, hallelujah. It's a hotline from here to there. And he cannot evade it. He cannot get into it. It goes straight to the throne room of God. And if you don't know what to pray about your child, if you don't know what to pray about your son, if you don't know what to pray about your daughter, if you don't know what to pray about that rebellious husband, if you don't know what to pray about the circumstances, get on your face until the Holy Ghost of heaven comes over you like a cloak and falls down and you begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. And he prays according to the very will of God for you. Amen. Well, point one. Oh, help me, Jesus. We are called to live in victory in the very face of our enemy. It shouldn't be us getting up in the morning saying, oh, I hope the devil leaves me alone. I hear that so much. It ought to be us getting up and the devil saying, boy, I hope she leaves me alone. I hope she don't get to praying like she. When I was a little girl, my mama was a little four foot eleven, two hundred and twenty five pound spirit walking around. She passed away in 
pastor of church, the very first church I ever went to, and I was afraid of the dark. As a child, I was called young, very young. I was filled with the Holy Ghost at seven. I knew at seven years old I was going to preach. I told my mom I was going to preach. She was the only one that didn't laugh at me because when she had given birth to me, the Lord had spoke to her and said, I've sent you revival. She thought a revival was coming to the church. She found out later God had laid his hand upon the child she had given birth to, the tenth one. I'm sure she wasn't welcoming me in any sense of the word, but there I was. And God put his hand up on me. And I remember being afraid of the dark even as a young age. Not only did God, now listen to me, not only did God reveal himself to me, the devil revealed himself. I'd go to bed at night. And some of you are going to say, I'm, I've, done, I've left her already. I've lost out with her already. Don't, believe, don't care if you believe it or not. I experienced it. I went through it. I'd lay in the bed at night, and the end of my room would become terribly, terribly dark. And there would be a dark image that would stand in the corner of my room. And fear would come all over me. I would be able to breathe. It would be hot in my room, and I'd cover my head and almost smother to death. I would feel like that thing was getting closer and closer. And it gets so close, I would talk to it and I say you better get out of here I'm going to call my mama see as a child I didn't know I was I didn't know how to say I'm going to call Jesus I'm going to call the Lord but I'd call my mama and I say mom hits back again and I would hear her little feet hit the floor Satan in the name of Jesus what do you think you're doing here how how dare you come in on blood territory? Don't you know when you came in through that door, you came under the blood? Man, that thing, it would leave. My room would lighten. I'd turn over and go to sleep. I learned to fight the battle glory from within. Oh, give God praise. We've got victory over the devil. One of the things we deal with are generational sins. Now, some of you are not going to agree with me, and that's okay. We can agreeably disagree. But I am sick and tired of preachers telling us that we have to put up with generational sins. I personally don't believe we have to deal with them at all. Woo, glory. There's a lot of difference of opinion on this. And I'm not talking about... I'm talking about, you know, those curses that people put on other people. You're not going to put no curse on me, devil. He may mess with my car. He may mess with my home. He may mess with all kinds of things. But he's not going to mess with my soul. He can't. It's covered with the blood. He's not going to get close enough to it. Because <laughs> anything that comes to the blood gets saved. And he's not about to. The blood releases you from those generational curses. I'm talking about those things we pass down to our kids, ladies. Learned behavior. <laughs> that is not of God. And the enemy uses it as an entry point into our lives. Well, my grandparents, they had this temper, you know. I'm like my daddy. Boy, my daddy, he'd tell you. You know, I'm from a part of the country that they'll shoot you on the spot. I was raised in Kentucky in the hills. My mother and my daddy and certain sides of the family. That's that repetitive behavior and it was just passed on. Well, that's fine if you've not been born again. That's fine if you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost. That's fine if you haven't been grafted into the true and the living vine. That's fine if you haven't been born into a new family. But when you got saved and when you got delivered and when you got set free, old things pass away. Come on. All things became new. And this battle from within begun to be fought and won by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. 
strife and envy and the fight to be right. I said the fight to be right. <laughs> and when we have that attitude, I'm going to be right, bless God. It sets up a place for the enemy to work in the battle within. Because, hey, I wish this place was full of preachers tonight. Because we got some preachers, not in here, but they're around. They're going to be right, even if they're wrong. We got some preachers. If you give God a thousand, he'll give you two. You know, if they believed that, they wouldn't be trying to get your thousand. They'd be hurrying to give God the thousand so they'd get the two. Oh, if you just send me your tithe. Well, I've got news for you. I don't go to J.C. Penney when I buy something at Walmart and pay J.C. Penney. Walmart expects me to put it where I bought the merchandise. And if this is where I'm coming and this is where I get my soul fed, this is where God blesses me, this is where I get my healing, come on, this is where it's joy, this is where it's peace, then this is what I'm going to support. This is where I'm going to put my shoulders to the wheel. This is where I'm going to be everything I can be. Oh, and even if I don't feel like it, there's days I get up, I don't even feel saved. But I'm saved because he says I am. I'm cleansed because he says the blood cleanses me. God is the source of your power. Don't fall secondly into the trap of carrying bitterness against anyone. You just don't know what they did to me. I'm going to be very vulnerable tonight. This is not in my notes. It really isn't. And I feel like I'm talking to some people. I had a sister-in-law. Why is it always in-laws and outlaws and people that are supposed to love you? I had a sister-in-law that she didn't raise up against my kids. She didn't raise up against my husband. She didn't raise up against my house. She didn't raise up against my job. She raised up against my ministry. She talked about my ministry. And God began to let me know that it wasn't my ministry, it was his. But she would come to my house and I was so bitter. I, I'm talk, oh God, I'm talking to somebody. I was so bitter that when I would pour coffee for her, it would run through my mind. I'd like to pour this in your lap. Seriously. Instead of your cup. That's funny unless it's serious. And it was serious. It wasn't funny. I could have burned her and not, God help us, and not cared. Are you hearing me tonight? Where there's strife and envy, all evil is at work. There's a battle that rages. Don't think because you got saved there's not going to be a battle. Don't think everything's going to be easy. I am so sick of this slap and grab name and claim thing that you can just, oh, everything's just going to be wonderful and it's going to be pie in the sky. And we tell people, just try God. You don't try God like you try a soda or you try a new dress or you try a car to see if you like it. This is a lifestyle. This is a commitment. This is something you stay with. You don't just try God. God, you live for him every day, even when you don't feel like it. Just like when you get up and you're married, you don't decide, I'm not going to be married today. You're married every day that you get up. There's a commitment, and we are the bride of Christ, and we've made a commitment to be married to him. And it got so bad. See, some people think it can't happen to Christians. But you can give place to the devil. You hear me? You can give place to the devil. And it got so bad, I had to have people come and pray for me. I had to be delivered from that spirit of bitterness. Because when that kind of unforgiveness 
and that kind of bitterness and that kind of rage is on the inside of you, the Bible said if you hate your brother, you are the same as a murderer. Whew. So don't fall into the trap of carrying bitterness against anyone. Fight the inward battle with the sword of the Spirit and declare, I am going to live free. I'm trying to get you to see that we're pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We are perplexed, but we are not in despair. We are persecuted, but we are not abandoned. Oh, hallelujah. We're struck down, but we are not destroyed. Do you hear me, devil? Every time you knock me down, I'm going to get up. Every time you laugh at me, I'm going to look to the Lamb of God. Every time you ridicule me, I'm going to remember that I'm in good company with the Son of the living God. Every time you say, I'm not going to make it, I hear his word tell me greater 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 is he that's within you than he that's within this world so as long as we're getting ready to leave this world there's going to be a raging war you're going to have to start over again and again and again <laughs> You're going to have to love your brothers and sisters again and again and again. Mm. There is a marked maturity that comes with tribulation. People grow up when they go through hard times. I'm real vulnerable tonight. I'm, I'm sharing. I have never had a drink of liquor in my life. I've never been on a dance floor. I've lived for God all my life. This is all I've ever known. And if you're not careful, you'll get a spirit of self-righteousness about you that stinks to high heaven. And so what does God do? God don't put me in churches that run 500 that's got all the flashing lights and got all everything. I don't mind those churches. I think it's great that they've got them. But he puts me where people where rubber meets the road, where people are crying every day, where people don't always have enough to eat. Where I worked in the family service department of the Head Start program and you visit little kids' homes that come to school hungry every day with their little nose running and the, the Lord says, get a Kleenex and wipe their nose because you are nothing more than just a vessel. My daughter lives in Hammond, Indiana. She's a Christian counselor. I'm proud of that, but I told her, I said, don't you lose the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't you think education has got the answer to it all because we need Holy Ghost-filled counselors that'll look at someone and say, this is not your nerves, this is not your mama, this is not your daddy, this is pure devil. And you, whew, cut up a shia. You need to be set free by the power of God. If you're jealous all the time, that's of the devil. If you're competing with someone else all the time, that's the devil. If you've got a battle raging within you all the time and you're never happy and you've got your face pulled down to your kneecaps all the time and people are in misery being around you, that is of the devil. That's a battle raging on the inside of you and God wants to deliver you from it. Now listen. We're too blessed to be stressed. Stress is the number one problem of women in this day and hour. It really is. It'll make you sick. It will make you. How many of you tonight, I, I, I know there's some of the, how many of you have got fibromyalgia? I knew it. Do you know what causes fibromyalgia? I have fibromyalgia. That's how I know. 
You want to get me tore up and hurting and not know which way to turn? The devil knows it. Just get me under stress. Now, I have arthritis sometimes, too. It's different. This other thing, fibromyalgia, is of the nerve endings. And when you get stressed and you think you can handle it and you think you can compete and you think you can compare and this battle rages on the inside of you all the time, you're fighting with the kids. You're fighting with your husband. Thank God I don't have that. But, boy, there's some people in the church that I just like to spank and send home. <laughs> Come on. You work with somebody that tears your nervous system up. You walk in the door waiting for it to settle down on you. I'm here to tell you, God is here to deliver you from the stress. Hallelujah. We've all laid awake nights. I'm getting ready to close. We've all had aging parents. We've all had financial problems. We've all had marriage disagreements. Ladies, we've all had wayward children. My son was in the service. He's preaching the gospel and pastoring now. But when he was in the service, he was a mess. Got away from God. God woke me up one night and spoke to me. God still reveals secrets. Yeah. Woo! I'm so glad. He's still a God in heaven that reveals his secrets. I called him on Saturday, couldn't get a hold of him. Called him on Sunday, he was in Panama, and I couldn't get a hold of him in, in South America. And they said, he's out. He's out for the whole weekend. I called him on Monday. I said, I've been calling you all weekend. He said, I know. They told me, what in the world do you want? I said, God showed me where you were, what you were doing, all the activities you were involved in. And I began to go down the list where he'd been, what he'd done. He said, did you call this far just to preach? I said, I called this far to tell you that God has got a hook in your jaw and you can't run very far. He's going to pull you in Shoo, hallelujah we've all had divorce situations we've all had disease and heartache we've all had death I found my dad dead when I was 14 in the bed I lost a preacher brother at 44 I lost another brother when he was 38. I lost a sister at 59. All of them died with colon cancer. And so the devil comes along and says, guess what you're going to die with? I'm here to tell you there's a battle raging of some kind within every one of us. But there is victory every day that you get up. You say, but what about tomorrow? You, tomorrow never comes. Didn't you know that? Did you know there's never a tomorrow? Today is the yesterday. Today is the tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. And today is the tomorrow that you worried about. It's always just today. It's always just the now. I don't worry about tomorrow. I was sharing with Sister Woolham. My husband's been very, very ill. They said last year he would not ever live. They said there is no way he'll come out of that surgery. They had the clergyman come and sit with me, and I was so stupid. I thought he was just coming because I was on the clergy board and he was being friendly. They didn't think he was going to come out of surgery. They had him sitting with me. A year and a half later, he's still walking and talking. I happen to know that God has a plan and God has a will I want him as long as God will let me have him but I'm here to tell you it's very possible that I may walk by his casket it's possible he'll walk by mine we don't know what tomorrow holds we don't have to have these battles of worry and stress from within he is the Lord of the battle he will take care of everything that you face I want musicians to come for me Hallelujah. Drugs are taking our kids over. Some of you are taking pills to wake up. 
to keep up and take another one to go to sleep. You say, Sister Betty, that's not funny. No, it's not. It's a serious thing. We live in a drug-induced world. There's a pill for everything. We've just learned that the pill that my husband's been on for the last 20 years has ruined his kidneys. gotta have it you gotta have it only to find out when they took him off of it he hasn't had any problems hardly at all with what they were treating him for the enemy is out to destroy you he wants your oxycotton and your elevils In your ambience, I've worked in the medical field just a little bit. I gotta get to the doctor. I gotta get to him. There's nothing wrong with the doctor, folks, but I'm telling you, there's some things he cannot cure, and some of it is coming from a battle from within, ladies. It's coming from on the inside of us, and there is deliverance there is a peace that passes all understanding we used to be the hand that rocked the cradle you know the hand of the mother said rock the cradle of the world now this world is rocking us it's tearing down everything that we believed in I'm here to tell you when I could hear the voice of that little Holy Ghost filled mother saying, Satan, in the name of Jesus, you take your hands off of God's territory. You go back from where you came from. You cannot stay here. You may try to come in, but you cannot stay. <laughs> There's church problems. You're going to be really glad. There's church problems. And so, some of us have picked out our church we're going to go to next. I call them bunny Christians. They just hop from here to there. They hop to this church and hop to that church. When the new wears off and the entertainment is gone, we find us a new place. God is looking for us to deal with this battle that's within us. There's times that I step down from the platform and I step right in the middle of my people. And I say, okay, I prayed for you. I want every one of you come pray for me. I'm facing a battle. Don't let spiritual pride get a hold of you to where you don't say I need prayer I need somebody to help me I need someone to lift up my arms I need someone to help me along the way because to be refreshed stand to your feet listen to me to be touched by God to be saved to be filled with the Holy Ghost to be refreshed doesn't mean that your problem is removed It means that we're giving, we're given the strength to handle what is going on in our lives. God doesn't always just move the problem out of the way. He gives you the strength to handle this battle from within. Because as long as we deal with people, you hear me? As long as we deal with people, there's going to be a raging battle. Because some of you wonder why things can't get straightened up. It's because someone else has made a decision that you have nothing to do with. There's no, you have no control over it. Your child that's of age or your relative that's as old as you are 
has made a decision and there's nothing you can do about it and you've stressed out over it and the enemy has used it against you I'm here to tell you that thing may never change but it can come to the place where it will have no effect on you Woo! you hear me it will have it'll have no effect on you it loses its power and its influence over you I want you tonight in the name of the Lord now ladies you can stand back and look at me you can say yeah 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 amen you cannot tell me that there are people here that don't have a rap battle raging from on the inside and you've wondered what to do and you've prayed about it and you've cried about it and everything else if somebody else is making this decision you can't make them do right you've got to let God help you handle it and let that thing lose its effect on you if you need prayer about a battle that's raging on the inside doesn't mean you're not saved doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Spirit doesn't mean you don't love the Lord but you're just tired of the enemy using this same old battle on the inside of you. I want you to step out from where you are right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Right here, honey. You, right here.
see my rising up and my lying down. You see my coming in and my going out. Oh, God. I just want you to know I love you.
things don't happen in an instant. Some things are a progressive work of God. What we've got to get away from, we've got to get away from thinking that the evangelist or the preacher or somebody that's out of this world or higher than us or whatever is going to do it for us. I would do it for you if I could. I cannot. I did not pay the price. I can point you to the one who can do it. But he shares his glory and his power. Aggressively. But oh, I know this. If you hold on to him, he'll do it. Bless he'll do it. Yes, blessed redeemer.
your name's above all names. You're my blessed a choice it is a choice because I had to make a choice a long time ago that I wasn't going to let my hormones dictate who I am but I'm going to control them and I'm a whole lot better than I used to be because I didn't care I just let it fly because I had an excuse but you know what it is an excuse God is able to to bring everything into subjection unto him when we let him. 
So I found out, you know, that I can choose to be angry and bitter and hateful and just tell you my business and everybody else's. But I choose to try to be a vessel of honor before him and be that vessel that he can use. Amen. Maxine's going to come and close our service for us. Truly, the Lord has been here with us tonight, and I just thank God for his praises and his sweet spirit. And as we get ready to close out, let's pray. God, as we come before you tonight, Lord, we just thank you for your word and your truth. We ask you to put it in our hearts and our minds, God. Go with us and keep us. Guide us and lead us to be a light for you, Jesus, to this world who is hurting and who needs you. And Lord, bring us back tomorrow, God. And help us to come in expecting and receiving. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Don't forget tomorrow, from 9 to 1030, we're going to be serving some pastries and juice and milk and all, all that kind of sweet breakfast food. <laughs> and then at 1030, we're going to come back in here and have one more service. Call somebody tonight. Tell them you got, you got to come. The Lord is in the house, and he's got a word to speak to you. Just come. Just come. Thank you, ladies. You've been a 